Good morning. This is Dr. Harden, and it is Wednesday morning, and it's time for Moments of Inspiration. That's right, Moments of Inspiration. And I want to thank God for all of you that's going to tune in this morning and so many of you that have been a blessing to me and by knowing that you are there and that you are getting something from this Moments of Inspiration. That's right, that you're getting something from it. And I just want you to know that I appreciate it so very, very much about your comments, et cetera, and that you're posting it and passing it on and someone else that you may not you may not know, and but they're posting with somebody else and somebody else is posting and posting and you help getting the gospel out and that I appreciate very very much I thank God for you every one of you that tunes in to moments of inspiration on Wednesday morning and remember if you post it someone else can see it at another delayed time and different time zones and so forth they can see it also because 10 o'clock here could be in, in if you're in Israel you're talking about eight something eight o'clock or nine o'clock at night but in the morning you know it's there so that's the thing but let me pray dear God I thank you that for another day, God, you have blessed us to see it. Thank you, God, that this is the day that you made, and I am rejoicing, and I'm glad to be a part of it. And I'm asking, God, just for a few minutes that you would allow your servant to speak words of courage and words of kindness, words that would inspire men, women that are down and out, just need a word for this moment, for this time, and for today. And I'm asking, God, that you would anoint the words that you are preparing for us you have told us have given us to share today that you were prepared that men and women everywhere will be inspired enhanced and enlightened and god i'm going to give you the praise and i'll give you all the glory in that name that's above every name our lord and our savior jesus christ thank god amen all right <clears throat> on today I'm going to share something with you. Uh, this is a lesson that basically uh, it was 2015 uh, when I shared this message. And I know that since 2015, that's five years ago, a lot of things have happened. And, and I, I don't want to just come with just anything. I have to really search it out because I, I ask God and I pray, what should I share with the people for moments of inspiration? And remember, these are moments of inspiration where that you, are going through and you've been going through struggles you've been going through a lot of things you don't need moments of sadness you got that you don't need moments of irritation you have that you don't need moments of, of people persecuting you and talking about you. no you need something to build you up and that's what moments of inspiration came out of in the mission in my heart that God gave me for moments of inspiration back in 1994 now I'm going to call your attention to a common strip for some you've heard the story uh, but uh, it's this bears repeating. There's something in here you might just have missed. If you have your Bibles, your phone, your iPad, a computer, and you want to go with me to uh, the 10th chapter of the book of St. Luke, St. Luke chapter 10, and verses 25 through verse 36 or 37. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life. Now he was tempting Jesus, said him, Master, teacher. And Jesus said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answered, said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thou self. Now this is what he's repeating back to him. And he said, this is what Jesus said, he said, Thou have answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. So Jesus let him know, you answered right, do it, and you're going to live. Well, he said unto him, Thou have answered right, do this, and thou shalt live. But he answered to, and he answered to justify himself, and said unto Jesus, Who is my neighbor? And Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves which stripped him of his garment or his raiment, raiment and wounded him and departed leaving him half dead. All right, verse 31. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way and when he saw him he passed by on the other side. And likewise the Levite when he were at the place 
came and looked at him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. He had compassion on him. Verse 34, and went to him and bound up his wound and pouring in oil and wine and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn, which is a hotel, and took care of him. And on tomorrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave him to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more when I come again, I will repay thee when now. Which now, Jesus asked them, of these three, think thou that thou neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves. Which one of these you think is a neighbor? And he said, he that showest mercy on him. Then Jesus said unto him, go and do likewise. Go and show mercy unto people. That's what Jesus was telling him. I'm going to talk uh, just a few minutes about how to come back from many of your bruises. Many of your bruises, all your bruises. How do I get back from my bruises? Well, if we look at life and, and understand that, that uh, Jesus was introducing something here, which is a Samaritan, a Samaritanism, that everybody that you think is not for you is not against you. It's not against you. So we should understand that from the beginning, that they are not against us. So when we look at this, this is a, a highly controversial thing that we are talking about. Uh, what, what I'm talking about is eternal security. This is what this lesson refers to in a sense, Re eternal security, which, we, which as some people say, you know, that once say, always say. That's the question. Now, they, say, they make that statement. The other views that we have sometime in our Pentecostal, uh, early Pentecostal state, they would say, if you did one thing, you was out and you was not saved. Well, both of those statements need some type of qualification. They need some qualification. The view is inaccurate in both cases. The Pentecost teaching saying that you do something wrong one time, you out. The other one said that the, the eternal salvation. Both have views that we that a constant salvation is critical. Now, here's what it say when we talk about this. You know, say well, uh, you can you can you can can't do this, you can't do that, or you fail to do that, and all of these factors are eternal salvation for they who have been born again if they continue to believe. Now, this is what we got to understand. Being born again, Jesus said, if you love me, you keep my commandment. If you love me, you'll keep my commandment. So in keeping God's commandment, that tells us that God blesses us according to his grace and his mercy. And so we have to keep his commandment. We don't want to say that we're living for God on Sunday and Monday through Saturday. We're doing everything but that. And we can't, don't want to say because if you make one mistake, you're out. Don't want, don't that to be the, the factor either. So the ideology of a person gets saved and then stop living saved uh, will be will be saved all his life. That's that's not true. And the idea if a person will make one mistake and they are out, that's not true. God gives us the opportunity to repent. All of us have all of us has come short of the, of the of the grace of God, and God have restored us. And we know that. And anybody that God that you whatever you're doing, if you repent, God will give you grace and God will have mercy on you. And so we have to look at that. So, but we refer to a th something that really is a, not a New Testament word. We say if a person fall, that they have backslidden. Here's the thing. I know this is going to be a shocker to some of you. The word backslidden is not in the New Testament at all. It's not a New Testament word. It's an Old Testament word, and God said he was married to the backsliders. He was talking to Israel, that he was married to the backslider. He said that he was saying that he was talking to Israel but and said that he was married to them, but the backslidden came from uh, the cows and oxes that they had to be slaughtered for sacrifice, and they would see all the blood uh, before them when they were bringing them there, and they would start pulling back. And so they had to, they would lay down, and they had to drag them to be slaughtered. And so they said it was like a backslidden cow. They was pulling back. They was going backwards, going backwards. They didn't want to go forward. They was resisting. That's where the word backsliding come from. So, but in the New Testament, in Isaiah uh, chapter 50, uh, 50, 61 and 10, it said, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. Now, know what he said. I will, Isaiah 65 and 61 and 10, 
I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My God shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decked himself with ornaments and as a bride adorned herself, herself with her juries. Now, think about this. So God is speaking, Isaiah was talking about the the, the the New Testament church, because Isaiah knew more about Jesus 700 years when he prophesied about this than many of us know about Jesus in this day and time after Jesus come, lived, and died on earth. Isaiah prophesied that we were the bride. We're the bride. We're not the, we're not the backsliding heifers. We're not Israel that he said this would happen to, but we are the church. The New Testament church is the bride. Remember, Jesus gave the parable, the parable of the five foolish uh, uh, well, virgin and the, and the five wise virgin. And they were bride. They had to deck themselves because the bridegroom was coming. So that's what we have to understand. So we, what, what, what we, when we use that word backslidden, you could be, if you're pulling back, that's what the backslidden means, uh, uh, resistant to go forward, reluctant to go forward. So you can be reluctant to go forward in your marriage. You can be in a marriage and want to get a divorce, but you may be too old or been in it too long and just suffer it out, and you're going backwards while the years are still moving on in your marriage. So you can do that, and, and, and there are some that are doing that. They are backslidden in their marriage. They're reluctant to go forward, but then they don't cut the cord. And so all of these things you have to look at and, and know it. And so we look at this, then uh, that, that, that the oxes did that. So we say if a person make a mistake, they failed to stop coming to church, they backslid. But actually what had happened, they have fallen from grace. They've come out of grace and they are, they are, they are not under the covering of God that they used to be. They don't have the joy. They don't have the initiative to, to move forward like they used to move forward. They was moving forward. So now they are to stand still and they are now there's more things in the world that they enjoy than they did when they was in the church. But after a while, that's just for a short term. After a while, they're going to become miserable. They're going to become sad. They're going to miss what they had before. When you, you cannot leave God and don't miss him. God is going to stir you. He's going to trouble you every day. Every time you do something that is out of his will, the Holy Spirit is going to trouble you. You will not have that joy. All the joy and happiness you have is just going to be temporal. You may be happy. You know, did you went here and got happy, and then all of a sudden it hit you. You know, I, I, I miss what I had. And, and eventually, God normally bring you back. So then, if we understand that, that will help us to understand what is happening. So, uh, we, 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 that's the thing about the fallen thing. But what I want to share with you is that the Bible gives the story of this lawyer, tempting Jesus, said to him, Master, what can I do to inherit eternal life? And, 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 and said, who is my neighbor? And Jesus said to him, uh, gave him the parable of what we call the good Samaritan. He gave him the parable. He said, a certain man. Now, that's what I like about what the Bible, when they give the parables. Parable is an earthly story with a heavenly end, ending. So he used the parable, and he said, a certain man. Now, when you say certain, that's not identifying uh, a person exact to, to, you know, if you want to identify me, you say, that's Garen. He's the pastor, great open door, and I've been knowing him for, no, you got some identity of me. But if you say a, he, a certain man that was walking down the street, well, that could be anybody. That could be anybody, because I don't know who, nobody that's a certain man. That means that that could be anybody. So he said a certain man went down to Jerusalem. On his way to Jerusalem. Now, now note how it says here. I want you to understand what Jesus in the parable said. In verse uh, 30, he said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. From Jerusalem to Jericho. Now, note, note this. These, this is very important. He went from Jerusalem to Jericho. The, 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 the city Jerusalem means peace or home. Peace or home. Now, this man left from his peaceful city or from his home, going to uh, Jericho, which means a city of fragrance or temptation. I want you to keep that in your mind. He left his home, his home, Jerusalem, peace, home. He left it, going to fragrance or temptation. Now, there's something about fragrance. I want to just dwell on that a little bit. It's something about fragrance that makes a difference. You can, you know, it, it's done intentionally. It's three things, you could, two things I'm going to give you that are done intentionally 
in market. Number one, in a mall. You normally, when you walk in the store from the entranceway, there is the fragrance, the cologne, right in front of you. That is intentionally because it's a it's a aura that you smell that grabs your attention, and you smell that, and you are uh, that fragrance grabs you in a certain way. A person can maybe not have on the right type of clothes, and they may not look as good, but they come by and you smell them. It gives you, you, you may have to look a little bit because it's the fragrant. It grabs you. So he left his home a peace in Jerusalem and went down, Jesus said, to Jericho, a place of fragrant and temptation and temptation. So he got there. What happened when the man got there? He leaves his home, go to Jerusalem, and, 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 and the people are surprised that they under sometimes we underestimate the power of fragrance. You know, if, if, if it wasn't the power and fragrance and, and cologne, perfume, you know, some people pay as much as eight or $900 or $1,000 for an ounce of perfume, for perfume, for women, just perfume. Pay that much. Why? They can just take a, just a little dab and all over the house, it's there. It's not like some of the stuff you know you buy and it smells good when you put it on you and by the time you walk out of the door, it's gone. But no, the good perfume, that's, that's why the woman that had the alabaster box, it was great fragrance and in it. It was really precious. And so when, when, he, when he get down to, the, to, to, to Jericho, the Bible says he falls among thieves. He falls among thieves. Now, we 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 got we got we can't misunderstand this because when we we we, we when I did this and I read this a long time ago and many times I read it and when it said in verse uh, 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 thirty uh, verse thirty it says and the chance that there was coming down a certain priest oh, no, let's go back go back to verse thirty and a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves fell among thieves which stripped him of his clothes. Now, first thing we think about that they beat him down and they tore off his clothes. No, no. Read some background, some commentary. It didn't say they beat him down. They said they, he, they, tore his, they took his clothes off and they fell among thieves and they whipped him. They whipped him. They didn't just beat, his, beat him down to take his clothes. If you go back, it'd have to be a reason. Now, I'm going to give you something, some reason here to understand. It didn't say they knocked him down. He said they, they said he fell among thee. All right, let me give you an example. I'd like to ask you that uh, married, uh, uh, in, 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 anticipated marriage, you said you fell in love. Did you fall down? Did somebody knock you down? You, some people say, I fell out of love. Did you, did you fall down? Did you, did you, I'm trying to give you the understanding here because that's a transit verb. It's saying that he fell among thieves. Why did he fall among thieves? He went to a city that was temptation and a city that was uh, a fragrance. So he went down there for some purpose that was not the purpose that God had, that God, that he was supposed to go in. That's why God said a certain man. So you can fall among, you can fall into temptation. You can fall out of temptation. You can fall in love and you can fall out of love. And this man fell through some hands of thee. What happened, the commentary, some commentary tells us that this man was gambling. And in gambling, if you lost your money, you put up your clothes. And if you didn't want to give your clothes, then you got a beat down. They taken the clothes. So evidently, he had did something in that in, that was wrong that they beat him down to take his clothes because the clothing was all he had left. He should have stopped what he was doing when he got down to his clothes, but he didn't do it. And so listen, there's a lot of time we fell in some trouble we didn't want to get out. We weren't that we were knocked down the front. We tripped. We tripped. You know, when we use the word trip, it doesn't always mean that you're falling. It doesn't always mean you fell because people say he's tripping. Do it mean he fell? No. His attitude or behavior is different. It's different. So that's the thing we got to understand is different. He fell among thieves and they stripped him of his clothes. Now, let me tell you something. When you are down, when you're down, you need somebody to help you get up. You cannot always get up on your own. That's why they make millions of dollars from giving you and uh, giving senior citizens. They write me now all the time. I call me and say, they'll give me a free pager. You know, if I fall down, I can push the button. I, I haven't taken it yet. But, 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 but and, and you can push the button and you get direct emergency to a paramedic or to the police department and they'll send you some help. So he, he fell among thee. And the Bible said he was half dead. That means he was in and out. 
And when he looked up and saw a priest coming, I'm sure in his mind, he was saying, thank God there's a priest. He's going to help me because the priest had to wear certain clothes. And a priest was traveling by. Now, we can't just say, well, this man should have helped him. But this priest, knowing probably that this man got in some trouble, that he got beat, gotten beaten and was laying there because something he had done. And maybe if he offered him some help or come to his service, he might be getting the same thing. Now, that's just a, you know, a, a proclamation or a guesstimation of what could have happened. But the Bible said he didn't even want to come close to him. He passed by on the other side. Passed by. How many times have you have thought in your heart that a person that would help you if something happened, they told you if you get in trouble or this or that, I'll help you. But when you really got in trouble and you really needed them, they passed by on the other side. They wouldn't answer your phone call. They wouldn't return your phone call. They would not try to come nigh you. They wouldn't come to where they knew you was are. You was you, you were because they did not want to help you. It was all just lips, 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 lips. That's what they was talking about. Lips, 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 lips serving. Now, the snake somebody come by was the Levite. The Levites were the one that was the workers in the church. And they came by. And when they came by, they, they, you know, I guess he said again, said, my God. Said, I, and the Levite came and stood over him and looked on him. He saw the wound. He saw the blood. He saw, do you know there's people that can see you, they, that you need help, know you need help, and yet they will walk by and he went around on the other side too. That's what he did. He went around on the other side too. Now, after going around on the other side, then all of a sudden, a Samaritan showed up. A Samaritan showed up. Now, I know, you know, that he being coming from Jerusalem, a city of peace and his home, he knew that in, 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 in Jericho, a fragrance and temptation that a, a, a Pharisee, that, that, that a Samaritan coming by and a Samaritan was their enemy. That's right. They was enemy. A Samaritan was people that they call hard to love because they was a mixture of Jews and some other nation of some other nationality. So they, 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 they Jesus told them not to go even through Samaritan. And here's the Samaritan now coming by. And so the Samaritan came where he was. He didn't bypass him. He came where he was. Nobody can help you unless they're willing to come where you are. They got to be willing to come where I am if you want to help me. Don't tell me that you want to help me. And, 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 and then when you say you want to help me, you don't come where I am. If I'm in a ditch and you want to help me, you got to get in the ditch to get me out or throw me something in the ditch to get me out of the ditch. That's, that's what you got to do. So when when people said that they want to help you and they're not willing to come where you are to help you and they want to stand and gaze from afar. Sometimes you can't help me from afar unless it's through some of these uh, uh, technology things. But most of the time, if I need your help and I'm laying down in my blood and I'm hurting, I've been beat and I've been left there to die, you need to come to where I am. That's right. You need to come to where I am. Don't tell me you love me and you are not willing to come where I am. You are not willing to come in my trial. You're not willing to come in my affliction. You're not willing to come where I'm hurt to help me and say, I want to help you. No, you're lying. You don't want to help me. But the good Samaritan, that's why we call him the good Samaritan. He came to where he was. He took out oil and he took out wine and pulled it in his womb and wrapped him up. Got off his horse, his beast. And, and, and what did he do when he got off his beast? He put him on the beast and brought him to an inn, a hotel. And, 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 and he said to the man at the hotel, he said to him to listen. I'm going uh, the next morning. He said, and you know, I got to leave. So he was he had been coming through there often. He was well acquainted with the, the head of the hotel or the inn. He said, but whatever he need, I'm leaving you some money, two pence, whatever he need. If it's spent, take more than this. When I come back through, I will take care of you. He had a good reputation. That's why we have to understand that there's a lot of folks that are not saved, but they have a good reputation. They're not, they, they, they got their honorable people. They will do some things for you that some of the church folks won't do. Now, that's what they get the thing. The thing said the church folks passed this man by. The, the priest passed him by. The Levite passed him by. These are the heads of the church passed him by. How many people we pass by on our way to church? How many people we see that have a need and we judge them because of what they have on? We judge them because of what somebody else have done to them. We judge them say, oh, they begging. They're a drug addict. They're a dope addict and they're this and that. Some of them are not drug addict. Some of them are mentally retarded. Some of them have been hurt so bad that they don't know how to get out of what they're in. But you can't help me if you're not willing to come to where I am. We pass by so many people that's coming to church, and we are in a hurry to get to church, and we get in the church to praise God, and maybe God wanted us to stop to help that person that was standing there. Sometimes the beggars are proud beggars. They do not 
they don't come up to your car. They just stand there, and some of them will just say, you know, on your way out, will you do this or will you that? Will you give me this or that? Uh, we, but we judge them and say, no, I'm not gonna give you nothing because it's your fault. You, you don't know who fault it is. They could fall. You can fall into temptation. You can fall. You know how many times you've been tripped, and nobody put their feet out and trip you. You trip yourself. You trip yourself on some idea or some ideology. You trip yourself with your eye. You trip, trip yourself with your mouth or what you said. But somebody have to be there to help you out. That's right. They got to get you out of that. You know, they got the song. So I fall down. I fall down, but I get up. But I get up. And so he, he fell among thieves. And that word fall mean, uh, uh, to, it, it actually means to fall into the hands of. To fall into the hands of. It doesn't mean he was tripped and he fell down. To fall into the hands of. He fell into the hands of thieves. Of thieves, and they, they 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 took his clothes. They took his clothes, and 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 let me tell you something. We all have fallen into things that we didn't know. That's sometimes why a person was an alcoholic, why they're a drug, uh, a drug user and can't get off. They fell into it. It was not their desire to become an alcoholic. It was not their desire to become a gangbanger. It was not their desire to become a rapist, a robber, or whatever. They just made a mistake, and they fell into the hands of the enemy, and the enemy made it almost a lifetime sentence. I read a book uh, a, a long time ago, and it said, in Canada, this must have been over 30 years ago I read that. In Canada, be careful what roads that you turn on because some of them have very deep crevice. And you might turn on a road and in those crevices, you may not be able to turn off for the next 20 miles. How many times were people that, that just said they were going to take one cigarette because they wanted to be like somebody else, now they hooked and they're going to package your day? How many people taking one drink and got drunk one time and now they're alcoholic? How many people got to use drugs? marijuana or cocaine or heroin one time and they thought that they could handle it and now they own it for life and and they need somebody to help them they have fallen down they've fallen down and and when you fall down you need somebody to help you so how do you fall into temptation in the first place? How do you fall out of love? Or how do you fall in love? What is said was that, 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 that he was gambling and he was beaten, and that's, that was the problem that he had. So sometimes in our, our church, we have people that are... Oh, what we got to understand, we think that because we are a member of a church or we go to a church, we think everybody in the church loves us. But there are some folks that were in the church that you think love you, but you become hard to love. How do you become hard to love? You become hard to love because you lied to them. You become hard to love because you did things to them. You become hard to love because they looked at your outer man and they seen that your outer man did not and so did not measure up to what you said you were. And then they, you are hard to love. And there's a lot of hard to love folk, but hard to love people, read my lip, hard to love people need love. They need love too. They need somebody uh, to care for them. Let me tell you something. You know, my, I've heard the word and you've heard it too. Say, I'm going to beat the hell out of that person. You can't beat hell out of a person. When you doing that, you only raise the hell that's in them. But I, I declare you can love hell out of people. You can love them so until that hellish spirit that's in them will become calm, will become nice, and will become gentle. Will become gentle. That's what Jesus did with the man uh, at, that was in the tomb. He was wild. Nobody could tame him. He was hollering. He would cut himself. He would go up against the rock. They had changes on him, and they couldn't. They couldn't do anything because he had all those demons in him. And and, and, and the demons saw Jesus, and they said to him, said, said, "You can't. Don't come to cast it out before our time. Said, that, 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 don't destroy it before our time." Jesus said to them, "Go." And they, they started, and they went into the water, and the pig, they, the, ran, the pigs ran in the water. They drowned, but the devil didn't drown. You can't drown a devil. You can't drown a, a, a spirit. And so they, they drowned themselves. But the man, they came out of the man. They came out of the man and went into over 2,000 pigs. Now, that don't mean that a pig is not good to eat because he got the devil in him and give you high blood pressure and all that stuff. That is, that's not what it's mean in that. No, 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 no. But what his, the panel was telling us that these demons had this man possessed. And this man cleaned himself up and went in and showed himself to other folk. And matter of fact, it was such a great miracle until the people told Jesus, get out of our country. We don't want you here. We don't want nobody here uh, cleaning up, uh, 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 misrepresenting us and having a, a man that's no good. You clean him up. You know, you, you may not believe it. In our churches, in our churches, that there are certain churches and certain church folks that don't want certain people to come into their church. 
Somebody can come in that don't look like us, not dressing like us, don't have on the hats we have on, have on some clothes, you know, that, and what we don't understand, they got on a short dress and a man got on a shirt and his chest is open. They're not saved. They're not saved. They're not born again. So they don't know. They came as they were. And you're looking at them and saying, go over there. Oh, child, you can't come in like this. And you can't do this. And don't sit here and don't sit there. Da, 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 da. Watching them. You're afraid. Those people need help. Show them some love and kindness. You don't really have to tell them. Thank you, Jesus. You don't have to tell them to take off what they have on. If they get born again and get saved, God will chasten them. And they'll know. They'll look at where, how the people are dressing in there. And pretty soon, they will be dressing the same way. The same way. And we got to stop trying to usher in our own thing. We had baggage when we came in. We, we, we came in. We had a lot of baggage. And we still got some baggage. And we got to help them know that this is stuff that we are carrying. And we 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 fallen into a system. we fallen into some stuff. we fallen into some, some stuff. We tripped. And we got tangled up. But let me tell you something. What I wanted to tell you in my clothes. In my closing, what I want to say to you, I am right now, what I'm, I'm, I'm prepared to do is to tell you that I am coming out of my bondage. I'm coming out of my wound. I've been wounded, but this is the time that God has given us. We got to come out of our wound. We got to start wrapping up and, and telling God, God, I've been wounded in the army. I, I've fallen from this, but God, I want to get up out of my wound. I want to come out of this wound. I don't want to stay in this for the rest of my life. I've been in it too long, so I'm coming back from my bruises. And when people start, start talking to you about, look, you're doing this or you did that, you tell them, say, I'm coming back from it. I'm on my way back. Say, I did it last night. I did it yesterday. I did it the other day, but I'm coming back. This is what God wants the church to do. He wants to let us know that we can come back. We don't have to stay down and wallow in it. We can come back. And let me tell you something. The Bible said, weep and may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And so God is saying to us, he's giving us another chance. And I want to say to you that are listen to me now through moments of inspiration, whatever you've done, you can come back. You can come back from your wound. Don't worry about what somebody said to you 10 years ago. Don't worry about what somebody said to you yesterday. You can come back from that. Pick yourself up and say, God, I'm submit myself into your hand and I'm in your hand God and God everything that I've did against anybody I'm asking you to forgive me right now and God I'm coming back I'm coming back to my place that I was I left the church because I was angry I didn't come back to do this and that because I was angry I want you to forgive me God I am not going to let my past keep me from going through my future I'm getting up from my bound I've been bounded I've been wounded and I've been wounded in the church I've been hurt in the church who haven't been hurt in the church you get hurt in your home but do you leave your house and never come back because you got hurt in your house, you've been hurt on your job and you haven't left your job. Why is it that we, when we get hurt in the church, we want to abandon everything, want to abandon God, like God hurt you. God didn't hurt you. Somebody hurt you. And sometimes your hurt brought you out of something that you wouldn't have never got out of if you had not been hurt. And that's some of the hurts are good hurt. That's right. Some of them are good hurt. I, I, I've grown out of things that people said that, that hurt me. It hurt me, but I grown, I grew through it. And that's what you got to understand. Your breakthrough is on the other side of your go through. If you don't go through, there is no breakthrough. Nothing to break through if you don't go through it. And on the other side, you know, you, you, some people say, well, I've been tramming, climbing up the rough side of the mountain. That was a song, up the rough side of the mountain. That's good because you can't climb up a clear mountain. If a mountain don't have nothing for you to catch on, you got to be an expert to do that. You're not an expert in going climbing mountain. But God left the roots there. He left a tree there. He left some bark there. He left a little hole there, a little rut there to help you get over. And, and you're not by yourself. You may have fallen into temptation. You may have fallen into drugs. You may have fallen into alcohol. You may have fallen into promiscuous living. All of those things. But get up and, and shake yourself and tell God, I'm on my way back. I'm on my way back. I'm getting up for my bruises. You're not going to keep me down anymore. The prodigal son fell. He fell. His father was rich. He fell. When he got, when he got of age, he said, give me what, I, what belonged to me. I'm getting out of here. And he, the father didn't hold it back. He gave it to him. He got out. And he went out and spent his money with prostitutes and, and, and worldly living. That's all he knew. And that was his craving. That was in his mind. And he thought that he was, going to, he was really going to enjoy himself. But when his money ran out, his friends ran out. Do you know you have sunshine friend and you have money friend? And when your money and your sunshine run out, the people run out. And when they left him, he, he tries to go and get a job. He couldn't even get a job in the country that he had spent all his money. And he went and joined himself to a citizen. Said, okay, I'm a citizen now, so give me some, help me out. And they put him in the field, sweet feed and swine. And when he was in the field, feed and swine, he said, he looked at them pigs eating. He said, this is too much. He said, I'm going to get up out of this hawk pen and I'm going home. I got a lot of stuff with me. I'm raggedy now, but I'm going home. I left home. I was a king's son. I had on 
king clothes. I had king money, but I don't have nothing now. But I, I know at my father's house, even at my father's house, the slaves that work for him have food more than enough. They don't have to look at pig. They don't have to look at the pig food and, and hungry for pig food. I'm getting up. And this is what we ought to say today. I don't care if you lost your job. I, I, I do care in that sense. Let me say it this way. I do care that you've lost your job or maybe that you don't have insurance and all those things. But don't wallow in it. Get up and say, listen, I'm going to make it. God, if anybody make it, I'm going to be one of them that make it. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. If they don't hire me for my profession, I work out of my profession. But I know that in your house, there's more than enough. I know that everybody in your house, the lowest person in there, the servant that wipes the other people, the wash the wish people feet when they come in, the servant that served the food, the man that cooked the food, or the woman that cooked the food, the person that brings it in, the, the supply. I don't care what I have to do, but I'm coming out of this pandemic. I'm not going to allow this virus to take the best of me. I'm not going to allow it to take my home. I'm not going to allow it to take my family. I'm not going to allow it to take my joy, to take my peace. I am going to get up and I'm coming home. I'm not going to stay and wallow in this stuff. So the prodigal son came home. And it's something about God. It's not about church folks now. It's not about church folks. It's about God. It's something about God. When God see and know that you want to come home, he will meet you. The father had been looking for him. Every day he had been looking for him. And down the road he saw from a from a far off he saw him a raggedy person and looking then he looked down the road he said here come my son he's coming home so go kill the fattest calf and get ready to prepare get the nice robe and get a ring to put on his fan on his finger and somebody said how you know that's your son he said he looked like me he walked like me and if i could hear him he talked like me you you know you know who your own are and so the, the, now here's what we have in the church we have grumbling folks that haven't did nothing they think they have everything and the oldest son Heard the music playing. So what are they doing? They said, your, your brother's coming home. That's been lost. He's coming home. And, and your father's throwing a party for him. So you ought to come and help him rejoice. He said, I'm not coming. He said, I'm not coming. I've been here all the time and he never threw a party for me. He never did this for me. And that's what people start saying. You never did this for me, but you did it for this person. You don't have no respect for me. You don't care about me. Shut your mouth. You got to understand what your rights are. This is what Jesus said. What the, what the man said to his oldest son, eldest son. He said, listen, son, everything I have is yours. Your, your brother got his part. Everything else I have is yours. And why in the world, anytime you wanted to, you could have threw a party. I never could have stopped you. It was yours. It was the inheritance was yours. But you stand and wait. And when I do something for somebody else, then you're complaining about it. So I'm telling you, get up off of your brink. You coming back from your brew. Yes, you've been bruised. Yes, you've been hurt. But my God, there is a bomb in Gideon. And that bomb in Gideon can bring you out. That bomb in Gideon can give you joy in the midst of this. That bomb in Gideon can make ways out of no way. That bomb in Gideon can give you joy and in the midst of all of your crisis. So get up and tell the tell the devil, I'm coming back. And tell him, so I'm back. I'm not just back here to sit in the back seat. I'm back now to do my work. I'm back now to do what I'm supposed to do. I'm back to help the ministry. I'm back to be an, uh, an asset to the ministry. I'm back now to not to be bound anymore. And devil, you can't run me out of here anymore. I'm coming back for my bruises. I've been wounded in the, in the service of the Lord, but I'm coming back. My God, you got to be like one of the little balls that you hit and it just keep bouncing back. It won't fall down. My God, you got to be like that. Every time they knock you down, you get back up. Every time they knock you down, you get back up. And let me tell you something. One of these days, you're going to look back and, and all of the stuff, that all your bad things and everybody that treated you bad and did things, you might write a letter or write a book. And you know, in your book, you might say, thank you for what you did for me by lying on me. Thank you for taking something from me. Thank you for doing this and doing that. Because if you hadn't did that, I wouldn't be where I am now. I would not know God like I know him now. But what you did to me caused me to go undercover. And I went undercover as a secret agent talking to God and I came from under the cover and, and you saw it you can see it now in the natural what God brought me through so you told me I wasn't going to make it but God you told me that I, everybody wasn't going nobody going to give nothing but but God you told me that, that that I was not be able to get out for that drug but God you told me that I, my family wasn't going to be the, but God that's what you got to understand but God they leave out God when God put, when you bring that conjunction in but God you know I would have been laid, I would have been dead but God I would have been uh, hung out on drugs but strung out on drug, drugs, but God, I would have lost everything I had, but God, I would have lost my family, but God, when you put that conjunction in, cooking it, connect yourself back with God, you're going to have the victory. God bless you. I'm coming back from my bruises. That's right. I'm coming back from my bruises. Thank God for you tuning in this morning to Moments of Inspiration. Get up, dust yourself off.
Be like the man, the man, and I'm telling this, and this, this, the man years ago uh, was a, uh, what they call a men prize fighter, and, and, and he was fighting, and he had won, uh, he had never, he had won, and he fought his way up, fought his way up to the, 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 the people. He fought his way up to the, to the championship, and this guy had knocked out every person that he fought, he had knocked out. And, 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 and so the guy said, I want to fight him. And, and they said, well, listen, so most of the people don't last uh, three rounds with him. He said, I want to fight him. I want to fight him. I want to fight him. And so he got in shape and, and, and he goes into the ring. And the first, in the first round, he knocked him out. Knocked him, didn't knock him out. He knocked him down. But he got up before the 10 count. And then the second round, they went, I mean the third round. And then he got by the third round. The fourth round, he got knocked out, knocked down, but knocked, knocked out. And, and so when he went back to the corner, he had been beat. And, and, his, and the ball said, his manager said to him, said, look, let me throw in the towel. He said, no, don't throw in the towel. He said, wash my face and comb my hair and let me fight another round. And he washed his face and, and, and combed his hair and, 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 and he got up and fought another round. And, and he fought until the, the, about the, 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 man on the, 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 the man that had knocked folks off in three rounds, he was growing tired now and he was growing weary. Why haven't this man fallen down? I've hit him with everything I have and he's still standing. And so now the ninth round, he's gotten tired and he's worn down because he said, I can't hit him with nothing else. And he's not falling. And when he do fall, he get back up. And, and he kept telling the man, it's the manager, wash my face and comb my hair. Just wash my face and comb my hair and the 10th round came up he went out and knocked that man out that had never been knocked out and had knocked out all his opponent opponents why did he do it he kept washing his face and combing his hair and i'm saying to you don't throw the towel in just tell them to wash your face and comb your hair and get up and fight another fight god bless you and thank you for listening to moments of inspiration hallelujah god bless you Dear God, I thank you for your word today. I thank you, God, that these that are watching, I pray that they would be inspired, enhanced, and enlightened. I pray, God, that you would give them their joy back, restore everyone that need to be restored. I pray, God, for those that are bruised, that they know they can come back from their bruises, that you are present help, God, in times of trouble. I pray for families. I pray for loved ones. I pray for parishioners. I pray, God, for pastors and elders and ministers and bishops and for our president and for our leaders all over the country, God, that you you, God, will bring us back together, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would heal, God, broken hearts, that you would pull down stronghold, God, that the devil have put on your people, and that you would open doors that have been closed in our face, and then closed doors, God, need to be closed, oh God, and thank you, and God, for this day, that this is the day you've made. Thank you, God, for blessing me to be able to share with your people moments of inspiration, and I want them to know, God, they can bounce back. They can come back from every bruise they've had. They can come back from every hurt they've had. They can come back from anything that they've, any failure they had. God, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Now, blessed is only you can do. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in to Moments of Inspiration today. And if there's anybody out there that don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior, I want you to pray this prayer with me right now. Ask Jesus, dear God, forgive me for all of my sins. And I want Jesus Christ, God, that one that died and was buried and on the third day rose again. I want him to come into my heart and to save me from this untold generation. And God, if you save me, I will serve you to the best of my ability with your help for the rest of my life. If you pray that prayer, you are saved. And God, I said to you, find a church if it's not in this city and you're not in this state. Find a good Bible teaching church and be in it and help them, help them to do it. And then I'm, I'm, I'm asking you that uh, enjoying moments of inspiration, plant a seed in it. Uh, there's some things that I'm going to be doing this year in moments of inspiration as such as getting some CDs out to you that some of you want to, some of the written messages. I have over 1,500 or 2,100 messages written, written out in, but uh, from 1987 to now. But some of these that may want to help somebody that you can say, this is not just for pastors, this is for teachers. Teachers, this is for ordinary people. I'm just an ordinary person standing in a position of a pastor, a pastor teacher. And, and, and so uh, many things. You can nobody is an island. I don't get all of this stuff from myself. No, I read other people material and I read uh, other people. I read commentaries. I read books, 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 book. I read books, book. You listen, I can I know some things probably about China and other culture that some of the people living there don't know because I read it in the book. I read it in geography. 
I read it in history. So people that weren't interested in reading, and, you know, I got some folks that live in, in certain cities, and you go there, and they can't hardly take you to the other side of the city and been there all their life. So books can put you in places where you've never been and give you information. So that's what the Bible does. The Bible is not a pure, not pure articles. It's not you just reading the article. Every word that you read in the Bible is life, and it's God's word. God bless you today. Share your offering. If, you, if you're on our website, PushPay, uh, and you can go to PushPay, and you can share. Uh, they tell you how to do it there on PushPay, or you can send it by check to 135 West Victoria Street here in the city of Long Beach, California. And all you have to put on the check is G-O-D, uh, Church of God in Christ, Great Open Door Church of God in Christ, G-O-D, God, uh, and if you want to add the other one, Worldwide Mimian, WWM. But you do that. And God, if you want to plant a seed, do it. If you have your own church and you, you, you please support your pastor, support him with your tithes and your offering. If you don't have a church uh, home, and uh, even if you have one and you want to plant a seed into this ministry, please do that. Share with us. I would so much appreciate it. So, so very, very much. And then if you don't have a church home and don't have a covering, listen, and you can't make it because of something is happening that you can't get out, you're convalescent, write us and we'll put you under watch care and we will send you back information and send you back things to let you know we care about you. God bless you. Please post this to others if you enjoyed it so that they may be able to hear moments of inspiration. I'll be back next Wednesday, the same time the Lord blesses us to be. We'll be here at 10 a.m. Also on Thursday night, we'll be sharing with you from the Bible study, from my Bible, sharing with you our Bible study on Thursday night at 7.30, Sunday morning, 8 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. Until then, may God best be yours and God bless you for tuning in. God bless.